but I think that'll work. So we've got our uh, Terminator head here, and let's have a little bit more fun with this. Let's go into iRay. So I'm going to click this little rendering thing right here. That's going to throw us into iRay. And one thing we always like to do, I'm going to hit Control Shift Escape. We're going to Task Manager. We're going to look at our performance here because this is kind of hardware heavy. Uh, so this is a really cool renderer. And you're going to see when it throws us in here, we're going to see this overall uh, environment, just like when we were in Substance uh, Painter, uh, the regular window. You can go through here and you can just do a clear color as the background, or you can have whatever's lighting your object here. So we can go through here and you can go through and change like your this to the autumn fall. For some reason, I really like that where it's like dark with the light coming in through the back. That's kind of neat. So again, uh, shift right click and uh, you can kind of play around with that. And now this is going to use the CPU and the GPU. In order to see the GPU really kick in, go down here to CUDA and you can kind of see this is really where that's um, coming into play. And then the CPU as well uh, is going to take a hit. And that's because if you go in here to edit, edit settings general and you scroll down, here's where the baking uh, enabled GPU ray tracing is turned on. So that's why the AO maps are nice and fast. And then also on the iRay hardware, it's using our GeForce RTX 2080 Ti and our CPU, which is the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3970X. So this is the 32 core processor, 64 threads, and then also our NVIDIA uh, CUDA right there. So you're going to notice it stopped rendering. Everything kind of dropped off. And that's because it capped out. It hit our max time, max samples, or uh, one of the other. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank up this max time and this max samples. And we're just going to, it's just going to kind of be always rendering because you want to get uh, the nicest view as possible. Uh, while it's doing that, we'll go up here to our autumn forest and we'll change this to, here's a cave entrance. All of these look really cool, by the way. These are all really neat. Here's kind of a predator style. Of course, like a beach. Oh, that's pretty. Glazed patio over the clouds is kind of neat with this one. If you were doing like a speeder, a little land, land speeder or something, a little jet, um, you could use this one. It kind of looks uh, good for snowy as well. Here's a very, very bright, sunny version. But we'll go ahead and just throw it in the get angst shipyard. That's good enough. Now, again, if we uh, don't want to see this background, all we got to do is go over here to the dome and we're going to say clear color. I'm going to drop this color down a little bit, make his head pop. Now, this ground right here is he's kind of floating a little bit. So if I want to put it right on the ground, I can just take this Y and just kind of pull that right underneath um, the chin there. If you, again, if you hold down shift, that'll give you a little bit more control. That's about right there. Now, if you want to play with any of the settings like the subsurface scattering or anything like that, you can hold down control alt, right click the teeth. And you see we're underneath, here, underneath the uh, teeth mat here and you can play around. Um, I don't know if the scattering absorbs is going to do too much in here. You can give you that a shot, uh, but you can go and play with the scale, uh, the color and the subsurface, subsurface scattering. One thing I did want to play with though is under the display settings, way down at the bottom, you can activate post. So now we have our emissive on and you're going to see it's getting that reflection right here. In order to kind of make that pop a little bit more, we're going to activate post effects and underneath uh, glare here, um, you can go through and you can make, oh, got to turn glare on. And now you can see, um, you can really make this thing super shine. I'm going to change this to bloom. So now you can see uh, we're kind of getting some blooming on that metal here. And then you can play around with the threshold and then also the luminance. I'm going to take this remap factor down quite a bit. You kind of play around with these. Uh, vignettes, also a cool one. You can kind of go through here and kind of just vignette out the uh, edges here. Lens distortion, going here to tone mapping. You can play around with the exposure if it's a little bit too light or too dark. This looks fine to me. Uh, depth of field is a cool one. If you really want to focus the eye in here, um, you can play around with this as a post effect, but you can also do depth of field in iRay. So if I go over here to the aperture, I can crank that up and you see it's going to start getting blurry. I can control middle mouse button click and that'll go ahead and set that focus distance. So you're going to see that focus distance is going to change. Um, so I can really crank up that aperture and that's really going to do, um, blur out anything I'm not focused on. So if I control middle mouse click on the eye, it's going to focus on the eye and blur everything else around uh, based on that Z depth. Or if I want to focus on the mouth over here, that'll give us that result. Um, and so a little bit of depth of field isn't too bad. You can also, again, like you can turn it on in depth of field over here, but we're going to go ahead and leave that alone. And we're just going to turn that aperture down so it's not so blurry. So we can just have a, like a little touch, like a little, just a little hint of it in here. And then if we go back up here, you're going to see it's it's still rendering. If we go about back to our, um, you know, our CUDA cores are topping out at, you know, 70 to 100%. Our CPU is really cranking along too. So 
It's very nice. It's very fast. It's built in. Uh, you got a lot of control. And then if you want to do your beauty render, you can go over here and you can say, um, you can just save your renderer. You can also hit share and that'll take you straight to ArtStation. You can also go over here to uh, save render and that'll save it as a JPEG. And you can also say override viewport resolution. So if you want to overcrank this and do like a 4K render, uh, just go to override and then just dial in uh, how big or how small uh, you want this. But for now, this is fine. Uh, the Firefly filter is enabled. Um, you should get, be able to get pretty decent, good results fairly quickly. Uh, just kind of letting it sit there for a bit.